Hi guys, welcome to this video. Uh, this is the two part video in which uh, in this first part I will be covering the multiple choice questions from paper one uh, of AS Physics A for OCR and um, this is the May 2022 paper and let's get cracking with the first question. So the first question says which of the following could be the wavelength of ultraviolet radiation? So we know that ultraviolet radiation is towards the violet end of the visible light spectrum and um, this is something that you need to know that if I was talking about the decreasing wavelength then say the violet end of the visible light spectrum is here which is around four times 10 to the minus seven meters in wavelength then as I said in terms of decreasing wavelength the ultraviolet radiation is right next to it and that is it ends roughly about in 10 to the power of minus eight meters in terms of again wavelength so Therefore, D is the answer for part one, question one. Now, for the next question, which term is not used in either of the Kirchhoff's two laws? And the answer is A, okay? The first law uses the fact that the sum of currents in to a junction is equal to the sum out of the junction, whereas the second law states that the sum of EMFs is equal to the potential differences across a loop. So that basically gives A is, uh, as our answer. Question number three, we have been given a diagram which shows the refraction of light at the boundary between two transparent materials, X and Y, and the refractive index of material X is 1.5, whereas that of Y is N. Which of the following expressions is correct? So this is talking about basically the law of refraction, which is Snell's law, and it's written as N1 sine I equals N2 sine R. Okay, now be careful in this question because Angle of incidence is not 20, okay? Angle of incidence is 70 degrees because it's with respect to the normal. And if N1 is 1.5, sine of 70 equals N2, which is just N, sine of, well, that's 50 degrees. So the correct option is going to be, therefore, C. Okay, with question number four, we are given that a student is carrying out the young double slit experiment using visible light. The distance between the slits and the screen is kept constant, okay? And we are given that the wavelength of light is lambda, separation of the slits is A, and the following results are collected by the student. Which combination of wavelength and A will give the largest separation between the adjacent bright fringes? So we have a formula given to us which relates all these quantities, and that is lambda equals AX over D, okay, where X is basically the fringe separation, and that's what we are trying to work out. And because D is constant, I can say that basically X is proportional to lambda and inversely proportional to A. So if I work out for each um, combination of lambda and A, if I work out the value of X, I can obviously figure out which one will give me the largest separation. Obviously, I can think about in terms of the bigger the lambda, the larger the value of x, and the smaller the value of a, the bigger the value of x. However, it could be, it could give you confusing results if you just were looking at, for example, d, okay, because that's got the highest wavelength. But again, a is, um, you know, it is, it's quite, it, it's the highest, however, it's in millimeters. So I would suggest that we calculate it for each one of them because the discrepancy might be very, very small. And so if I start working out for, let's say, D, okay, and pop the values into my calculator in the right units, remember nanometers and millimeters must be converted into meters for consistency. Um, for D, I would end up getting 2.03 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, as a value of X, okay, in meters. Um, for C, I end up getting 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3, okay? For B, I would end up getting 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. And for A, I might as well, not that I don't think A will be the answer, but might as well work that out. So that will be 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3, okay? So therefore, B is the greatest value and B is my answer. For question number five, we are given a car of mass 1000 kilograms is traveling on a straight and horizontal road. The driver applies the brakes and the speed of the car decreases 
from 20 meters per second to 15 meters per second in 2.4 seconds. What is the average power dissipated by the brakes? So the power dissipated is in terms of energy divided by time. And we're dealing with kinetic energy over here. Okay, so the kinetic energy lost, okay, is, it could be written in terms of the speed. Okay, so half times m, which is 1000 times v squared, um, which is basically, I'm just going to say it's the difference between these two velocities squared. Okay, don't just do 20 minus 15. Okay, you have to calculate the energy lost, which involves therefore using um, 20 squared minus 15 squared. Okay, so that's going to be the kinetic energy. Um, the difference in the kinetic energy divided by the time, which is 2.4 seconds. And following this calculation, I'm going to get the answer as 3,000, well, 36,000 458.3 watts. Therefore, um, C is my answer. Next question, number six, talks about two coherent waves which are emitted from sources X and Y. And the diagram is not drawn to scale. X and Y are in phase. And the phase, um, sorry, the wavelength is four centimeters. The phase difference of the two waves at point P is 270 degrees. Which row gives the possible distance for A and B? So, Let's work out, um, given the fact that phase difference is 270, let's work out what is the path difference. Okay, so path difference for point P, uh, the waves meeting at point P, is going to be simply 270 over 360 degrees times by the wavelength, which is four centimeters. So I'm just gonna leave it at centimeters because everything else is in uh, centimeters too. And that gives me three centimeters, okay? and a and B, they're basically the two paths okay, taken. So if I take the difference between the two, the only one that gives me three centimeters in terms of the distance, okay, so that's like B minus A, the difference uh, for C is three centimeters. Okay, so C is the answer. Now, for question number seven, we have a resistor of resistance 12 ohms and which is connected in parallel with another resistance R. And the total resistance of the circuit is four ohms. What is the value of R? So that's a really simple question. One over four is equal to one over 12 plus one over R. So if you just rearrange it um, to make R the subject, we end up getting six ohms. So B is the answer. Let's move on to question number eight. So in this, we have a cell of EMF 1.2 volts, which is connected to a wire of resistance six ohms. The potential difference across the wire is 0.9 volts, what is the internal resistance of the cell? So we know using the formula of EMF equals V plus IR, where little r is the internal resistance, EMF minus V over I is R. All we have to do, work out is the value of I, okay, the current. And because this is only one component and it's series, therefore the current can be calculated using this combination of 0.9 volts over six ohms. And that gives me 0.15 amps of current. Therefore, the calculation is pretty straightforward. EMF is 1.2 minus 0.9 over 0.15, which ends up giving me two ohms and C is therefore my answer. With question number nine, we are given a thin metal plate, which is free to rotate about <clears throat> point P in the vertical plane. Four forces A, B, C, and D acting um, on that point, um, on the plate, okay, are shown. And we have to figure out that which of the four forces will produce the greatest mo moment, okay? So we know that any perpendicular forces um, will produce the greatest moment as M is equal to F times D, okay? And technically it's the um, F, well, oops, M is equal to F D sine theta, and as sine theta for A is 90 degrees, it would give us the greatest moment, therefore A is the answer. For question number 10, we are given that a total of 3.8 times 10 to the 7 electrons flow through a wire in a time of 1.2 microseconds. What is the current in the wire? So we know current is equal to Q over T, and Q can be written in form of number of electrons times by the charge on electrons divided by the time. So if I pop in all the numbers where I'm given 3.8 times 10 to the seven electrons, followed by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of charge, 
divided by 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds, that would give me an answer of 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6 to two significant figures, and therefore C is the answer. Right. For question number 11, we are given an electric motor which is used to lift a weight of 4 newtons through a vertical height of 0.9 meters in 1.8 seconds. The efficiency of the motor is 20%. What is the electrical power supplied? Okay, which is technically the input. Technically the input. Let's work out the output power. Okay, so we are given that power is energy, right, over time. And energy is in terms of gravitational potential energy because it's been lifted through a height of 0.9 meters. So the weight is just mg, okay, h divided by t, okay, so 4 newtons of mg times by 0.9 over 1.8 seconds. And that gives me a value of 2 watts. So now this is the output power. Okay, I'm working out the input power given the efficiency is 0 0.2. Okay, so remember the formula of efficiency is that it's equal to the useful output over the total input. Okay, so 0 0.2 is equal to 2 over the input. Okay, and therefore the input turns out to be 2 divided by 0 0.2, and D is the answer. For question number 12, we are given plane polarized light is incident perpendicular to a vertical polarizing filter, and the polarizing filter is rotated about the horizontal axis. Which property of the transmitted light changes as the filter is rotated? It is only the intensity that would change. Okay, so B is the straightforward answer. With question number 13, we are given a load which is suspended from two wires P and Q. Both wires have the same diameter, meaning they have the same area, cross-sectional area, and we are to calculate the extension of the wire Q given the original length of the two wires and the Young modulus of uh, the two wires as well as the extension of wire uh, P. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you can do this in many different ways, but I like to use ratios when we are talking about two different things. Um, let's start with writing down the formula for Young modulus um, in terms of the extension or the length. Um, so we know that Young modulus E can be written as F L over A times delta L, where F is the force, L is the original length, A is the cross-sectional area, and delta L is the extension because um, F and A are both constants, okay, because it's the same load and same cross-sectional, well, the same diameter, I can safely say that E will be affected only by um, the length and the change in the length of the wire. So let's figure out now a way in which we can uh, find the extension. And I'm going to use um, what's given to me for P, okay, so um, let's say that E Okay, so for um, wire P is just given as E, okay, and L is the original length and the extension is given to me as 4. Okay, I'll just leave it in millimeters because it's ratios and the final answer is also in millimeters. So then for Q, if I just say uh, this was for P and for Q, I'm going to have 3E, okay, is equal to 1.5L over the extension that I am trying to figure out. So I'll just leave it as delta L. So if I just do one divided by two, okay, so the two equations divided together, I will get E over three equals L over four divided by 1.5 L over delta L. Okay, and I'm trying to find out delta L. So E and E cancels out, L and L cancels out. I'm left with a third over here. Okay, followed by a quarter times by, as I flip the second fraction, 1 over 1.5. And I have, of course, delta L at the top, okay, as it's flipped. So delta L is simply given to me by 4 times 1.5, which is 6. 6 divided by 3, which gives me 2. Okay, so A will be the answer. For question number 14. We are given uh, a bunch of graphs and we are asked to figure out which graph represents um, the resistance, uh, the relationship between the resistance of an NTC uh, thermistor um, with respect to the temperature. And we all know that as the temperature increases, the resistance uh, decreases and 
a will be the answer as it's not a linear decrease okay so question number 15 we have been given that a student balances a uniform metal rod horizontally and the rod is pivoted at its middle the position of w or the weight is kept constant the distance of the weight f from the pivot is x okay and the student changes f and then adjusts x so that the rod remains balanced okay which statement is correct so a a graph of f against x will be a straight line through the origin um not really because we know that well mo moment is equal to f times by x okay however um f and x are inversely proportional to one another so in fact well, that gives away that D is the answer. But let's just talk about the other two as well. Okay, the upward force at the pivot is equal to F. No, it's not because the upward force gets affected by the weight as well. And the weight of W is equal to FX. No, it's not. FX is the moment, okay, um, caused by the force F. Uh, so the weight is definitely not FX. So D is confirmed answer. Okay. For question number 16, we are given IB characteristic curve and, well, a straight line for the two uh, components, R and L. Which statement is correct? Um, and, well, let's see. R and L are both filament lamps. No, they're not because the line R is straight and therefore it is an ohmic conductor, whereas filament lamp is non-ohmic. So B, R and L um, have the same resistance at 1.5 volts. Well, 1.5 volts, let's see. So that is roughly not roughly here okay so they do meet okay if they meet the resistance is going to be therefore the same okay so i'm gonna say b is the straightforward answer now for question number 17 the photoelectric effect can be demonstrated using a gold leaf electroscope the zinc plate on of the electroscope is negatively charged ultraviolet radiation incident on the zinc collapses the gold leaf what is removed from the zinc plate by the incident radiation? Answer is A. As this is the photoelectric effect and when UV radiation is incident, the electrons are immediately removed from the zinc plate and that just leaves us with A as the answer. For question number 18, what is the total energy gained by N electrons traveling through a potential difference V? We know that E equals n times o v times q and we also know that q can be written as ne okay where n is the number of electrons over here as n capital n and e is the charge on the electrons okay so therefore d is the answer for question number 19 a student is experimenting with sound waves of wavelength three centimeters and em waves with a wavelength of three centimeters as well which statement is correct about both of these waves they can be polarized no they can't no well um, sound waves can't be because they are longitudinal um, they can form stationary waves yes they can so b is our answer question number 20 and this is the final question of this video it says a laser emits a uniform beam of light which two quantities alone are required to calculate the intensity of the beam of light we know that intensity is equal to power over area okay and that leaves us with b being the answer Okay, so as I said, this is as far as I go in this video. I will be doing another one coming out next week where I'll go through the long answer questions as well. So stay tuned for that video and thanks ever so much for watching.